Hello and welcome back to Die Rolling! I'm the ever excitable Adam and today I'm going to be playing Arkham Horror, the card game revised core edition that Chaos Cards generously gifted us um, for the Halloween event. So thank you again for that guys. Um, we did the last scenario which was uh, the gathering and I successfully succeeded in succeeding at being successful. Uh, I, I burnt my house to the ground and uh, yeah, that was that was pretty fun managing to defeat that ghoul priest finally. Uh, this time round, we are playing the Midnight Masks, and this time we're going to be going all over Arkham trying to find various different cultists. So um, hopefully, this will be another win for the investigators. Uh, but even if it's not, we'll still uh, we'll still continue to the finale, which is one of the great things about this. It kind of got a branching uh, narrative, depending on what you did in previous ones, will affect the next one. Um, but even if your character died, you can still carry on the story. And if, as long as you have enough investigators, you can always bring other people in uh, to replace those investigators who were killed or incapacitated. Um, so yeah, join me at the table and we'll see if I manage to uncover the identity of the Midnight Masks. Part 2, The Midnight Masks. In the wake of the disaster at your home, Lita Chantler, the red-haired woman from your parlour, lays out a tale that even in light of what you have just witnessed, strains the limits of your belief. The creatures in your home, she claims, are called ghouls, cruel beings who plague the crypts, caverns and tunnels beneath the city of Arkham. These creatures feed on the corpses of humans and they are served by a dark cult within Arkham whose members have inexplicably come to worship the ancient master of the ghouls. This cult has been killing innocent people and feeding them to the ghouls, sati satiating a monstrous hunger a dark balance was maintained. Until now, recently, Lisa continues, one of their lairs where the corpses were stored was destroyed. Since then, the ghouls have been more active than usual. I have tracked their movements and tried my best to stop them from running amok throughout the city, but I think there is something worse going on. The cult had been planning something darker and more ominous than anything I have yet observed. Indications are that this plan shall come to fruition tonight shortly after midnight. Beyond that, I cannot fathom what to expect. Many of the cultists, Lisa continues, will seem like everyday people, despite their foul intentions. Whenever the cult meets, its members don masks shaped like the skulls of various animals to protect their identities from one another. These masks are our mark, symbols of death and decay. We must unmask the cultists to expose and derail their plans. We have but a few hours. The more cultists we find before midnight, the better. Predator or prey? Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you too are being hunted. So at any point we can resign, you don't want to risk taking too long, so you head to safety within the inf with the information you've gathered. Uncovering the conspiracy. You have one night to find the members of this cult and unveil their plan. The more members of the cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. The investigators spend two clues as a group, draw the top card of the cultist deck. Find as many unique cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in the victory display, advance. Not all six of them are in the cultist deck. Okay, so I've upgraded my investigators. Let's see how we get on. So uh, let's draw our top five cards. And we've got one of our upgraded cards straight away, which I upgraded uh, the Blinding Light because that came out really, really good last time. So um, this has basically deals an additional damage. So it's two damage uh, when evading somebody. Um, I'm going to get rid of the knife because I think the knife's one of the worst cards in the game. There's another knife there. So um, I find the Heirloom, the Heirloom of Hyperborea is pretty handy so I'll shuffle these knives back in well a knife can come in handy now and again and then for Roman Banks he's got a dynamite blast manual dexterity a 45 automatic emergency cash and a research librarian to assist him in his tasks for the evening well I'm not gonna get rid of any of these cards because they seem pretty good and we're essentially going to try to find these locations now um we've got to double check where we can actually move to because some of these are only one way for instance if we go to the graveyard from rivertown uh, we can only go back to rivertown we can't go any other way so uh 
of river town which is where we begin uh, the banks of the Miskatonic River are lined with docks, warehouses and small shops in a district aptly named Rivertown. Now the interesting thing is, is there's actually a card for um, your house. Uh, but obviously we, we can't use that because we burnt down our house, so all good. Which is why we have the, uh, the mental trauma of Agnes Baker here, because she was dealt uh, a blow seeing her house where she had all those childhood memories just go up in smoke. Okay, so we flip this over and Rivertown has two clues there. There is something unsettling about the water of the Miskatonic River tonight. It ripples and bubbles as though something is moving beneath the surface. Probably those ghouls. Okay, the shroud value is one, so it's only one to try to actually um, discover anything in here, which is pretty good. And I feel like I'm gonna do more spells this time. So I'm gonna spend three of these resources straight away um, to get the heirloom of Hyperborea for Agnes. So essentially whenever she plays a spell card she's going to be drawing an additional card which is pretty good. Okay then she's going to do a search. So she's going to try and investigate the area. Uh, her search is two, she needed one, she got zero. So two minus zero is two so we managed to find discover a clue at the location. Helps if I'd actually put the clues on here. So we're going to put that there. And then she's going to draw an additional card. The Rite of Seeking, which is another one I've done uh, here. So it's a spell. Spend one charge on here. It starts with three charges. Investigates using your willpower instead of your insight. You get plus two for this test. If you succeed, you discover one additional clue at this location. Um, but if it is a skull, a shrouded character, a broken tablet, a gribbly thing, or the tentacles symbol is revealed during this test, after this test resolves, lose all remaining actions and immediately end your turn. But that is awesome. I'm very glad that came at the top of my deck. So I'll be using that very shortly. So Agnes is finished for this round. Roland is going on next. Okay, he's going to play his event to gain three resources straight off the bat. Boom. Uh, and then he's going to spend four resources to get his automatic out. After all those ghouls he came across, he is, uh, yeah, does not want to uh, face off against any of them unarmed. And then he is going to search the area that he is in. Although we have this acolyte who's spawned down here. And I believe that's going to be a bad thing. But there we go. It says forced after acolyte into play, place one doom on it. However, I don't think I need to do that because he was already in play at the beginning of the game. I might be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. So we're going to try and search this location. We need a, we've got three, three, minus one is two. So we find this and we're going to spend our clues. Oh, it's an action to spend clues. So we can't do that because we used our, we got our emergency cash. We equipped our pistol and then we did a search. So the Acolyte on the enemy turn just kind of stays there. He's not searching for anything. He's just staying at the south side, whatever's down there. We all get a resource each and draw. Look what I found. Um, fast play after you fail a skill test by two or less and you discover two clues in your location. That is really cool. And then uh, Roland finds a beat cop who is upgraded. We get plus one and we can exhaust a beat cop uh, and deal one damage to a exhaust the beat cop and deal one damage to it deal one damage to an enemy at your location so essentially this guy's coming to assist us uh, i flashed my badge around he's coming to help us out or maybe actually this guy turned up at the uh, at the house and like what's going on guys uh, and roland's gonna use him so we place one on there and we draw from the mythos uh, the encounter deck we have crypt chill for uh, agnes and a locked door attached to the location with the most clues and without a locked door attached. The attached location cannot be investigated. Now I don't actually have anywhere which has that. So I'm gonna place this on the area I think would, would serve the investigators the least. And we're gonna lock this door here. So you've got to break down the door with a might test to get into the south side. So the, the acolyte is aware of the investigators and he's essentially locking up wherever he is in the south side so they can't get to him so he can fulfill his ghastly purposes so we've got to do a test for agnes 
uh, a willpower test. She's got five already. Plus one to a six as so she passes. Okay, so um, what shall we do? Right, we're gonna Agnes is gonna begin. We're going to spend two clues to reveal the first card at the top of the deck here. We have Ruth Turner, the mortician. She spawns at St. Mary's Hospital. After Ruth Turner is evaded, add her to the victory display. She's got an evasion of five. So I need to basically outrun her. And her little text here says, bodies from the morgue have mysteriously gone missing. Perhaps the mortician in St. Mary's has something to do with these disappearances. Okay, so we are going to get um, Agnes to move over to here. So we are seeing, can we move to the green? Yes, we can move to green. So she's moving over into Miskatonic University. Miskatonic University is one of the most prestigious colleges in the Northeast. The university library is famous for its collection of cult books maintained by the esteemed Dr. Henry Armitage. Okay, so it's a shroud value of four. And as an action, search the top six cards of your deck for a tomb or, tome or spell card and add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. The campus is quiet and lonely. Several of the buildings have been left unlocked for students and faculty working late into the night. There are four clues at this location. And Ruth Turner engages with Agnes. So our first was to um, to do this. Our second thing was to move into Miskatonic University. Now I have to try to evade. Okay, so I'm gonna use my survival instincts to try to evade here. So actually I need more than that because her evade is five. So, oh, this is really tough. I'm gonna have to use my blinding light uh, spell. So I'm casting a spell here. And after I play a spell card, I draw one card. So I'm gonna draw this emergency cash here. Um, I'm going to commit this skill to the um, to it as well. So I have to pay one resource to do that uh, spell. I'm attempting to add a additional. Actually, no, it's willpower I need now. So I'm using willpower. So uh, my willpower is currently five. And then on Wings of Darkness.
one of things happened, I've taken too horror from doing that. Okay, so we got
Okay, so I'm going to try to evade him. That's my final action. So my first one was to uh, search. My second was to spend clue tokens. And my third was to do that. So I got a minus two to this. So it's a one. Now, I'm going to play this quickly. Play after you fail a skill test by two or less, which is what I did. I uh, discovered two clues in your location. So I've got these two clues. Which means I'll be able to parlay with Peter Warren if he doesn't manage to kill us. So it's the enemy phase now. Uh, Peter Warren does one damage to Agnes. And we all get a uh, resource and a card. Unexpected Courage there for um, Agnes. Roland gets a flashlight. Not that he needs it where he is. Uh, we get a Doom added to this, which means we have enough Doom here to proceed. Oh, so the Masked Hunter. Spawn, engage with prey. Prey most clues. So the Masked Hunter's turned up. Uh, gets plus two health per investigator. While you're engaged with the Masked Hunter, you cannot discover or spend clues. Oof. So he's come out just before we're about to parlay with Peter Warren. And now we're going to be drawing uh, stuff. So this is for... Agnes, so we have an obscuring fog comes over Miss Gotonic University, meaning that is now a shroud value of six. And essentially that shroud, that, that kind of fog, this masked hunter has appeared from within the fog. And then for Roland, in the graveyard, on winds of darkness, we've got another test of speed. And there's no way we can pass this. We're going to use this to give us a, a plus one. So our speed is currently three. Fail. So, Roland's taken back there. He takes one horror and one damage. And that flaps off. They are picking on him. Okay, so we're on to our good pal, Agnes. Agnes is going to try to evade the Masked Hunter. She's got a speed of three, plus two is a five. Minus one, so she manages to evade the Masked Hunter. Moss Hunter's at this location, but he is currently distracted. She's then going to spend her two clues. She's going to take a damage for this, though, if because she's engaged to uh, this guy. But she does two clues, which manages to get him into our um, Richard pile. Although, she... Um, why don't you take that horror? Well, I think we're fine. So she's one action left. I think we're going to move her down to St. Mary's Hospital. Arkham's only hospital, St. Mary's, has a 24-hour receiving room and busy at all hours of the night. Dr. Mortimer and Nurse Sharon have been particularly stressed lately. Thanks in part to recent events. And I've just realized I spawned her at the wrong location. Oh, Adam, you silly bastard. So we've got two clues here. And we can heal three damage limit once per game, which is pretty handy because that's where she is. Right, Roland. Roland is going to move to downtown. Uh, the downtown area of Arkham is filled with government buildings, including City Hall, the First Bank of Arkham, Independence Square, and Arkham Asylum can also be found in this area. It is the busiest district in the city. Uh, as an action, we can gain three resources from here. There's two clues in this location as well. 
My next thing is I'm going to move from downtown to Northside. Northside is a commercial district that contains many offices and factories as well as the train station. Spend five resources, gain two clues from the token pool. Once per game. Northside, nothing gets people talking faster than a bit of dough. So Victoria Devereaux has attached herself to Roland uh, and he is going to take the damage from her so you can spend five resources to parlay. So it's three cultists off the street. Okay, so um, we ready up the masked hunter. He's going to be searching again. Oh. Need to get a resource. Perception goes to Agnes. And the old book of law appears for Roland. A hunting shadow. <laughs> uh, essentially, a hunting shadow just comes up and takes out Agnes just as she's at the hospital. So Agnes takes an additional two damage. Is there anything I can do to, uh, to stop that? No. So she takes two damage, which means Agnes is out of the game. And then for Roland, we have a Hunting Night Gaunt. Maybe that one that keeps trying to uh, get him. While well, attempting to evade Hunting Night Gaunt, double the negative modifier of each revealed chaos token. They had no faces at all to smile with, but only a suggestive blankness where a face ought to be. Three strength, four hit points, one agility. Okay, so uh, this thing is attached to me. Um, I'm going to exhaust my beat cop. Deals one damage to him, one damage to the night haunt, night gaunt even. Uh, I'm then going to spend a one of these to hopefully shoot him. Minus two, so my strength is currently four, five. Minus two is three, so I do two damage to that guy. And then I spend another one to do the same thing again. Fail. And my last bullet. So these things have been really, really ticking me off. Minus four. So I fail to, uh, to get rid of him, which is a pity. Oh, no. So uh, he attacks me now for one sanity and one damage. The Mars Hunter goes towards the person with most clues, there isn't any, but he's going to come to me, so the Mars Hunter is also here. And actually, he wouldn't move first, so he also attacks. So that's two damage and one sanity damage. Okay, um, so we then add a Doom to here. I think I'm going to have to resign from this because I feel that I'm not going to get out of here uh, in one piece. What's the next thing we get? Obscuring fog comes over the north side, of course, because a mask hunter is with us. So, um, yeah, at this point, I'm going to spend. Um, no, I am going to resign. So, uh, Roland hurries off into the night. You managed to obtain some useful information about the cult and its plans. You can only hope it's enough. I've got to log down that, um, write down all the ones we interrogated. So, we had three people. Who we found so Victoria Devereux, Ruth Turner, and Peter Warren. And then we have a look at who got away. So the last hunter got away in his obscuring fog. Wolfman Drew and Herman Collins. So those three are still at large. And we didn't manage to get all the clues off of any one location. So unfortunately, we don't get any um, any additional victory points. But we have three victory points going into the next game, which is the final uh, of the Night of the Zealot.